Hey everybody, I'm Matt McQuaid. Everyone calls me Z. I am that Z guy and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to improve the webcam quality for your recordings or live broadcasts. All right, guys, so as you can see, the camera doesn't look as good as the intro. Uh, there's a reason behind that. It's because I wanted to give you guys a look at how my webcam looks every time I open up OBS before I make any changes, just so that you guys have got a reference to that as well. The most important thing that you can obviously do to improve your webcam is obviously the lighting of your room. Uh, make sure that it's very stable and consistent, whether you have to use natural lighting or artificial lighting like I use. Also, subject lighting is just as important, which is why I have a ring light. You could use something as simple as a lamp, or if you have Elgato key lights, or you can use a softbox light. Doesn't matter, whatever you've got at hand will obviously help to illuminate yourself as the subject. Okay, so this is with the window open and my ring light on, just to give you guys a little bit of a different view on the subject lighting as well, and how important that can be to obviously bring yourself uh, forward from the background, uh, which is also very important. Also, you'll note that autofocus is still on at the moment. We need to turn everything automatic off on your webcam to get the best quality out of it. Um, so as you can see here, I put my hand forward, it will adjust to my hand here. It'll make the background nice and dark, and that camera quality looks pretty good, right? But as soon as you pull it away, it filters everything out, and then it tries to brighten everything. All right, we're gonna jump right into the settings part here. Um, to get to the settings of the webcam, obviously you're gonna have it set up as a source in your scene. Uh, so you can right click that and go to properties. Um, we'll go through these top buttons here in a second. Uh, the resolution type, I have it set to custom. I get the best out of my Logitech webcam running it at 720p rather than 1080. I found that even though the camera does run at 30 FPS, it does look a lot cleaner at 720 than obviously trying to retain at that 1080, 30 FPS cap. So obviously the FPS here, there's a lot of different selections that you can have in here. Uh, you don't want to cap it to 30, you'll always want to put this to uh, highest FPS, so I found that works best for, for the webcam. Video format, we've got MJPEG. Uh, we do have a couple of different options here. That's just the best option that I've found for this particular webcam. Uh, if you have different options and a different webcam, I highly recommend just trying them out to see if they look best for you. With color space, I have this set to 601. Leaving a default is okay, but it has the potential to change automatically depending on the lighting situation in your room. Um, as I touched on earlier, anything automatic we kind of want to turn off um, to help like stabilize the actual image that your camera is capturing. Uh, so go ahead and select one of the two, see which works best for you. I found 601 works best for the Logitech C920. Color range, I have mine set to full. Uh, you can select partial as well. Uh, I just find a full color range works best for the webcam. And buffering is something that I just haven't touched on the webcam, so it's okay to leave that as auto detect. Okay, so now to get into the actual advanced settings of the camera, we're gonna go and click configure video here. Uh, of course, this opened up on the other monitor, so let's just drag this across here. This is gonna have two pages to it, video proc amp being the first and camera control being the second. Uh, to start off with, everything that's automatic on the right hand side here, if there is a tick, untick it and hit apply. Uh, make sure that the frequency is set to 60 hertz. It just runs a lot smoother that way. Uh, this is for the Logitech C920. If you have other webcams, 60 hertz is generally the, the normal uh, that you want to have it set at. Uh, now in camera control, make sure that everything automatic is turned off. Focus, exposure and low light compensation and then hit apply. Now the only thing that I physically change on this particular panel uh, is the exposure. I run negative five. It just seems to work best for my room and my lighting. This is something that you probably are going to have to fiddle around with to see what works best for you. Now back to the main page here, the three key points that I change is brightness, white balance, and the gain. You wanna take note of the numbers on the right hand side because once you get your camera set, they're the numbers that you want to set every single time that you come in here. I know exactly what numbers I need to change everything to, and it takes me just a couple of minutes to get ready. Okay, so for myself, the settings that I change is obviously the brightness. I just put that up two notches to 130. I just find that the brightness just needs that little bit of a kick just to improve the overall quality. Uh, my Y balance, my sweet number is 5400. Um, the white balance slider, if it's more to the left, it's more of a blue cool color. 
And then obviously if you move it to the right, it's more of a red or warm color. I like the warm colors in my face because I don't like to make myself look very pale. I like to make myself look fairly naturally skin toned. Um, so I try to have this slider a little bit to the right. And it also helps with the vibrancy of the colors in the background as well. Um, as opposed to sliding it all the way left where everything just goes blue and washes out and you can't tell the difference between the colors. So for me, the sweet spot number is 5400 and I put that on the dot every single time just like this. Now for the gain, uh, for myself, I reduce this from 200 uh, down to 125. Uh, that is just the sweet spot for myself. Hit apply. And as you can see, like the camera itself it, it's kind of like a little bit, it, it's a little bit jittery and it doesn't have that sort of smoothness that you're really chasing. So once we've locked all these in here, we just go okay and close this down. Um, <clears throat> not sure why that blacked out like that, but it did. Um, now what I like to do is I like to then deactivate the camera and then reactivate the camera. And what you'll see is there will be a, a slight change of the settings that you've just saved. Um, so you are going to have to pop open configure video again, um, which is fine. So I can see here the gain has changed. Uh, most likely the two things that will change for me in the settings that we've just set is the gain will increase or on the second page in camera control, the exposure will change, which we can see here. It's gone from negative five to negative four. I just skimmy that back to negative five, hit apply back here, reduce the gain uh, down to 125, hit apply, okay. Now, as you can see here, just from doing that reset of the camera, it has made the picture quality a hell of a lot smoother. And then voila, the camera is set, everything looks fine, it looks good on the small camera screen, it looks good on the big camera screen, it even looks good when I'm on TV. What I also do as a little bit of an added bonus because you guys have stuck around for so long, I actually have one small thing that I actually add to my camera to give it just that little bit of a pickup in image quality as well. Uh, I use what's called a LUT, which is like a color filter over the top of the image that the webcam is capturing. I obtained mine from the Gaming Careers YouTube channel. Uh, he put out a video and he included a package of around about 30 uh, LUTs that you can use yourself. Uh, I'll put a link for that into the description below. I highly recommend watching that video as a more in-depth explanation on how LUTs actually work. So let's go back here. <clears throat> now with the LUT, what you do is similar sort of thing. Rather than go to properties, you go to filters, right click here, add, apply a LUT. Um, now you can rename it what you want here. I've got mine as Asvendo, which is a part of the gaming careers pack. As you can see here, we've got the link there. Um, so what we do is we go into browse and here are the gaming careers lots. There is a little bit of a pack there and you can go through and you can try different ones and you can also adjust the strength of the lot as well, which I have done. Um, and it just gives it that nice little added kick for that image quality. I've got my lot here and if I click this on, you can see that it instantly makes a difference. It darkens the background a little bit. It gives it that smoother overall image quality. It enriches some of the colors and I find that it personally looks best for me. And that's it. Once we've locked in those settings, you're ready to start recording or broadcasting to your streaming platform of choice. I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. I've tried to keep it as short as possible. If you have any other interesting things that you would like me to cover for you within OBS, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I might be able to spark up a new video for that too. Please don't forget to like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate all you guys and until next time, peace out.